and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I made these really cool record divider tabs. I showed these off in my room tour video and you guys were like, yeah, we want to see that video. I, I had said, you know, hey, if you want to see it, let me know. Several people commented, I want to see it. So I decided I would show you guys how I made these. I also want to tell you guys I kind of got this idea from Brandon over at Mr. Hall of Fame. If you guys are not familiar with his channel, I will leave it linked in the description box below. When I was watching his room tour, he had these really cool tab dividers that had band logos on them, and I don't think he shared how to do that. I can't exactly remember, but I kind of saw it and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try and make some of those myself. So I will show you what you guys need and uh, then we'll kind of get into the general how-to part of the video. You will need a computer and a printer for this project. If you're really artsy, you could honestly probably draw some of these logos and handwrite some of this stuff as an option, but I will kind of talk about that more so when I get into the actual meat and potatoes of the video, showing you guys how to do these. Yeah, I'm really excited to show you guys how I made these, but I did want to give credit where credit is due because I, I was trying so hard to find some record dividers that I was, you know, interested in, and I decided to make my own. So I hope you guys can get some inspiration from this video. And yeah, let's just get into it. I'm going to tell you guys what you need to make these dividers really quick and then I'm going to get into showing you how I get everything ready and put them together. Now I do want to preface this by saying you will need a computer and a printer. Um, and these are very, very customizable so you guys can do whatever you want with these. These are kind of trial and error, honestly. And, you know, if you don't have access to a printer, you can definitely handwrite and hand draw on these and make them your own that way as well. I'm just not very talented in the art department, so I cheat a little bit and use a computer and a printer. So that's first off. Second, you'll need to print out your logos and text that you want to use for these. So when I sat down to do these originally, I did numbers and then I did A to Z and I kind of picked out some of my favorite artists to start with or just points that I really wanted to highlight in my collection and I kind of put those down. And then there were some that I realized I missed that I wanted to add. And so that's kind of what I'm showing you guys today, some of the ones I want to add. And I also made some of these for Jared as well because he wanted some for his collection. So yeah, I'm going to kind of show you guys through that. So you'll need the printouts of those, which I will get more into how you make those once I go through everything you need. Obviously need some record dividers. They sell these on Amazon. They're packs of 25 and they're about 20 bucks. I will leave these linked below. I have bought several of these. Um, obviously if you want to do numbers and then A to Z, you'll have to buy two because it's only 25. But if you just want to do some of your favorite artists, you may just be okay with buying one pack. But yeah, I will link those below so you guys can go get those from Amazon if you're interested. If you don't have the money to get them from Amazon, you could easily just take some scrap cardboard and cut out a record divider shape if, if need be too. You'll also need some scissors to cut out your designs. You'll need some Mod Podge or really any glue that dries clear. And you'll understand that more whenever I show you the process. I personally prefer Mod Podge, but really anything that dries clear should be fine. You'll need some kind of brush or this is like a foam brush here. Any kind of brush, paint brush, whatever. And um, you'll need like a plate or a bowl or something to put your glue on. Or if you have a small enough brush and want to dip it out of the jar, that's cool too, but I have a pretty wide brush. Let's get started with how to put these together. Alright, so firstly you're going to go to your computer, go to Google, Bing, whatever search engine you use, and you'll want to start typing in logos. And this is if you want to use a band or artist logo um, for your dividers. 
for example, the first one I'm typing, typing in here is the Led Zeppelin logo. You can go to images and find the image you want. Um, you'll probably want to use something with a plain background. Now, since these dividers are white, you can use something with a white background. I'll kind of go into how to edit these a little bit later, but basically you'll want to save them to your computer. I have a Mac, so I can just kind of drag and drop them. Um, but, you know, you guys know how to right click and save it to your pictures if not. Um, but basically I went through and I did this for every band logo that I wanted. So it's basically the same process of typing in the artist name and like logo and finding one that I would like to use and dragging and dropping to my screen. So I'm able to edit it a little later on. Now, I'm going to open up a blank Word document here, and if you don't want to use logos or if a certain band or artist doesn't really have a logo you like to use, you can pick any font you like. I've downloaded fonts from defont.com. I'll leave a video link down below on how to do that. I'm not going to explain how to do that. Um, in this video because I've already downloaded a lot of them, but I basically chose a font I liked. Usually I set it between 32 and 36 size font, just kind of depending on the style of the font because some fonts tend to be bigger than others. Um, and also depending on how long your band name or artist name is, this is trial and error because you'll really have to find a perfect medium to get these onto your dividers and basically you'll just kind of want to save this and print this out whenever you um, are ready whenever you have all of your bands or artists or whatever done you can do like Christmas soundtracks numbers A to Z whatever you want to do you can just type it in so this part is if you don't have an iMac, you can drag and drop your logos into Word. You can resize them. I kind of show you that you can resize them. You can kind of see if it's the same size as your font, maybe make it a little smaller or bigger. You know, you can kind of play around with this. This is why I said you might want something with a white or transparent background if you use Word. Now, I just kind of showed you how to do it, so I deleted it from the Word document uh, because I like to edit these in Keynote. I have a MacBook, so Keynote is a really great editing device for the MacBook. But basically, I just open a new document, and I accidentally opened a black document, so I just set it to white because I'm going to print it on white paper. Um, and the dividers are white, so you do want the background to be white so it doesn't look botched, you know, like just you copied and pasted. Uh, so I basically just kind of set it and I started to import my logos in. So I kind of like to do one logo at a time. Basically after I imported my Led Zeppelin logo, uh, I wanted to edit it first before I added another one. So I go to image and then I click edit mask and instant alpha. And I just kind of showed you what to do if it had a different background color other than white, uh, just to get the basic background out. And once you do that, you can go back to edit mask and then you'll be able to actually like crop the picture itself instead of get the extra background stuff out. And basically I chose to crop out Led Zeppelin and just do the symbols for this one. I also did one where I cropped out the symbols and just did Led Zeppelin. Um, just that way I made one for myself and I made one for Jared. And you kind of keep doing this until you have all of your logos imported and until you have all the backgrounds cleared out and cropped uh, to your liking. While I'm editing a little bit here, um, I just wanted to tell you guys, if you guys don't have access to a printer and aren't able to like print out these logos, you can always just get some plain white printer paper and handwrite names of artists or your letters of the alphabet, or draw these band logos if you're kind of artsy like that. I mean, you can do that anyway, even if you do have access to a printer. Basically, this is kind of up to you. This is very customizable. You can write or draw whatever you like on these uh, and edit these however you want. But basically, when you get all of your 
text and your logo's done, you're just going to want to save your keynote and your Word documents to print. Uh, that way you can resize these because this is trial and error and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about more so in other clips when I mean trial and error because you might have to resize these, especially if this is your first time making these. Um, but you might have to resize them depending on how big or small you made them. Sometimes you can make it bigger if you'd like. Sometimes you need to make it smaller so it'll fit on the tab and you can read it. All right, so after you have your logos printed out, this is the sheet of logos I did. Um, and then I only did a few actually like that I wrote in Word and did text for. I like to do band logos where I can. Um, but yeah, these are the ones that I did. After you do that, you're just going to want to cut these out. You know, it should be pretty self-explanatory here. Um, but yeah, you'll just kind of want to cut these out. And I usually try and get as close as I can with these, just so you don't have a lot of extra paper. I kind of go around the edge first. I mean, I shouldn't have to tell you guys how to cut stuff up. Uh, this should be pretty self-explanatory part here. You'll want to kind of get it like this, like this is pretty close to the edge of the logo, but you don't want to like cut the logo. Uh, as you guys can see, this is the queen logo. I'm making a queen one for Jared, but you'll kind of want to get it close like that. So once you kind of cut them out, you're going to take your logo or whatever and place it on your divider first just to kind of see if it's the right size. If you can size it up, size it down. Um, this is kind of where the trial and error goes in because like I said, you kind of just have to figure this out um, and make sure it fits the tab. So you'll want to do this for all of your labels that you print out. Okay, so then when you guys have them all cut out, you're going to take your divider. I have my plate with my Mod Podge and my little brush here. And what I do is I take a little bit of Mod Podge on my brush and I kind of just brush it across the top of the divider here. Just a little bit, a little bit goes a long way. Then you'll want to take your label and kind of lay it on top there. Get it like centered where you like it. And then I take a little bit more Mod Podge and I kind of dab it on top first. And then I'll like a little bit more evenly spread it across just so it doesn't move because you don't want it to get like bubbles or things like that in it. You want it to stay pretty smooth. You'll just repeat this process for all of them. Mod Podge dries, it's clear. That's why I said you guys will want a clear glue. Uh, that way, whenever you put it on top of the label, it doesn't dry and you don't see the label. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video on how I made my record dividers. If you guys make these, let me know. I would love to see some of your all's creations. Uh, I have social media. If you're not following me on my socials, I will leave them down below. So that way, if you want to tag me in any post of you making these or whatever, I would love to see them. Uh, or if you just, you know, want to comment on one of my videos that you made some of these that's cool too i'm just really excited to share this with you guys and uh if you guys are new feel free to subscribe and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and in the comments below uh if you have any video requests let me know or if you guys have any questions about these let me know i feel like i went through everything pretty thorough but i just want to make sure that everyone understood everything. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.